the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson Wax products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie, with music by the Kingsmen and Billy Mills Orchestra. Do you remember when your kitchen linoleum was brand new? You probably got a big thrill out of it, and you decided that you were certainly going to take good care of it. Well, have you? Does it still look almost new? It would if you'd begun right away to protect it with Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Because when you apply glow coat to linoleum, you're putting down a tough shield that protects the finish against wear and dirt and moisture. The thin, invisible film of glow coat itself takes the wear, and the surface underneath is safe. That's why the regular use of glow coat makes linoleum last much longer besides keeping it sparkling and beautiful. Glow Coat is easy to use because it needs no rubbing or buffing. You simply apply and let dry. Conservation begins at home. In fact, it begins in your own kitchen, the very first time you use Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat. Whoever said the hand is quicker than the eye never saw the squire of 79 Westville Vista practicing sleight of hand. Get a load of the old Butterfingers right now. <laughs> With a book of magic, a deck of cards, and ten thumbs, as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Oh, uh, do that last trick again, McGee. That was very good. What did I do? Made a card jump out of the deck into the cup of your pants. Oh, so that's where that other card went. <laughs> My gosh, I've been looking all over for it. Here, let me try this one. Here, take a card. Any card. All right. I'll take this one. It's the Ten of Diamonds. Well, heavenly days. That's wonderful, dearie. <laughs> Just a simple feat, my dear. The answer is quite amusing when you read it. Whoa. Oh, that Here. Over the I'll help you pick them up. They're yeah. all over... Say, I know how you did that trick. Huh? They're all the Ten of Diamonds. <laughs> You'd have never knew if I hadn't have dropped them. I like the trick better, though, where you made the glass of water disappear. Hmm? You know, when the rubber band pulls it up your sleeve? Hey, how'd you know it went up my sleeve? I saw it go. Besides, your sleeve leaked for 15 minutes afterwards. <laughs> now, I need a little more practice on that one. What on earth is this all about, McGee? I'm doing a magic act at the Elk Smoker tonight. Why, you never did any magic before. Ah. Isn't the time a little short to learn a magic routine? No, not for anybody with my natural dexterity. And after my years in vaudeville, I got a great line of fatter to cover up any mistakes I make. Well, <laughs> I think it was mean of the entertainment committee to ask you to do this with so little time to prepare, though. Oh, they didn't ask me. I volunteered. In fact, they begged me not to do it. <laughs> they says it takes years for anybody to get to be a good magician. And I says, yes, for the average ham-handed Orpha says, but not for me, I says. <laughs> Give me half a day to practice, I says, and I'll make your eyes bug out so far it'll take a truant officer to round up your pupils. <laughs> What do they say if it's fit for a lady's ears? <laughs> well, sir, I showed them one simple little feat of ledger domain that stopped them right in their tracks. Really? Took a half a dollar, see? Made a pass over, and whammo, no half a dollar. <laughs> Had them completely baffled. Where did it go? I'm darned if I know. <laughs> I've been looking for it ever since I got home. But it takes a pretty smooth magician to fool even himself, you'll admit that. What tricks are you going to do tonight, dearie? <laughs> well, the way I got my routine laid out is like this here. First, I do a few simple stuff with coins. Yeah. Then I'll do some rope tricks, cut a rope in five places and restore it. For goodness sakes, can you really do that? Well, Natch, it's right here in the book. <laughs> I just read it over once and I can do it like a mice. Here, I'll take this piece of rope, you see? Absolutely undamaged. Examine it, please. I find it completely undamaged, Professor. Mm, exactly. Now then... Hello, Mr. I... McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, Alice. Have a chair while the mighty mystic McGee mystifies, amazes, and instructs. <laughs> Yeah, get a load of this, kid. I'm practicing my magic act for the elk smoker tonight. Oh, gee, I wish I could be there. You like magic, Alice? No, but I've never seen an elk smoke. 
Let's leave the levity to the magician, shall we? <laughs> you see this rope, Alice? Yes, jeepers. That's a wonderful trick, Mr. McGee. Do it again. Doggone it, I haven't even done the trick yet. Oh. He cuts the rope in five places, Alice, and then makes it all into one piece again, you see? It's oh. an amazing illusion. Yeah. Most people think the magician has an extra piece of rope hid under his coat or up his sleeve. Has he? Oh, I certainly not. Anyway, I don't think so. <laughs> Hand me the book there, Alice. Page 26. No, nope, no rope up the sleeve. Wouldn't it be safer tonight, dear, if you just took the book along and read him the tricks? Oh, I can do them. Now, I'll take this piece of rope, see? I take it in the middle like this here and cut it. Whoops. Okay. I now have two pieces of rope, of which both pieces are of equal size and length. Jeepers, this is simply wonderful. He hasn't done the trick yet, Alice. Oh. <laughs> now then, your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. I will now proceed to restore the rope to one single undamaged piece. I take my magic wand. Hey, where's my wand? What's the stick under your arm? Huh? Oh, oh, yes. I take my magic wand, wave it over the rope, abracadabra, presto, and I have here... My gosh, a bowl of goldfish. <laughs> Where on earth did they come from? I'm doggone if I know. I must have been doing the wrong trick. Did you give me page 26, Alice? Oh, I thought you said 76. I'm sorry. No, no, forget it. In fact, I can use this trick in my act with a little patter like this. You see, folks, I always like to have a few goldfish around anyhow. Every four weeks, I walk through the woods trying to find a brook with goldfish in it. <laughs> I belong to the Brook of the Month Club. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now for my famous illusion, sawing a woman in half. Would one of you ladies kindly step up on the Not stage? Not me, McGee. I've got to go make the bed. Oh, I've got to go to work. Goodbye now. Cowards. Okay. Billy Mills in the orchestra, and there must be a way. Oh, wonderful. I'm working on the trick now where I borrow a watch from somebody, smash it with a hammer, and then shoot it out of a pistol. Good as new. Well, I shudder to think how many places that trick could go wrong. <laughs> but, uh, I got that one down slicker than a wet spaniel. <laughs> Let me take your wristwatch. No. Oh, come on. I won't hurt it. No. Please. No, McGee. Positively no. Ah. Uh... You gave me this watch as an anniversary present. I'll not have it hammered to pieces nor shot out of pistols. <laughs> it's just a trick. I'm pretty sure I can do it. But, dearie, this... This watch is worth a great deal of money, aside from its sentimental value. <laughs> yeah. But the better the watch, the more impressive the trick is, see? Nobody cares if you bang up a dollar turnip, but when you see a gold and diamond creation being battered to pieces... Oh, no, no, McGee, it wouldn't be right to... Who's that? Mrs. Carstairs. Oh, hot dog. She's got a wristwatch that's worth 3,000 bucks. Platinum and emeralds. Come in, come in, come in. Hello there, Mrs. Carstairs. Do come in. <laughs> How do you do, my dear? Hi, Carstairs. I'm glad to see you. You're just in time to see some parlor magic that'll make your faded old eyes light up like a burning barn. You got your wristwatch on? Now, McGee, for goodness sakes, don't... Why did you ask, Mr. McGee? I wanted to show you a trick, Karsty. Come on, let me take it. Very well, but please handle it carefully. It's extremely valuable. 
If this doesn't work, McGee, you better reload that pistol fast. <laughs> You're going to have to shoot your way out of here. <laughs> May I ask what this is all about? I'm studying magic, Karsty. I'm going to smash this watch with a hammer, vanish the pieces, then shoot it out of this pistol without a scratch onto it. And if it doesn't work? I haven't failed yet. How many times have you done it? <clears throat> well, this will be the first time. <laughs> Well, here we go, laughing and scratching, girls. Now, first, I place the watch on this little anvil. Then I take the hammer. This is going to be wonderful, Mrs. Carstairs. He can do this with my eye shut. Please be careful, Mr. McGee. It would be very annoying if you hit your thumb with that hammer. Hmm. Now, don't worry, kiddo. Now, watch this. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Then, with a simple twist to the wrist, watch me closely, folks. Presto, the watch has disappeared. <laughs> Time flies, don't it? <laughs> That's a crack I put in there. <laughs> May I suggest that you proceed with your feats of magic without the humorous comment, Mr. McGee? I second that emotion, too. Okay. <laughs> now watch this. I load the pistol, fire it into the air. Oh! And now... <laughs> Wait a minute till I look in the book. <laughs> I forgot what comes next. The police would be my guess. I don't mind the loss of the watch so much, my dear But it had a lock of my husband's late hair in it uh, uh, Mrs. Carstairs, you mean your late husband's hair, don't you? No, he's still here, but his hair is gone <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it. Just feel in your left sleeve there, Karsty, and tell me what you find. <laughs> oh, my watch. Well, that was very skillfully performed, Mrs. Are you McGee. sure it isn't damaged, Mrs. Carstairs? No, it seems to be perfectly all right, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> Even the lock of hair... Good gracious. What's the matter? The hair has turned completely white. <laughs> We must go tell Mr. Carstairs about this. Good day, Mrs. McGee. Goodbye, Mrs. Carstairs. <laughs> My goodness, you certainly had me nervous there for a minute, McGee. That handful of platinum and emeralds is no dime store trinket, you know. No, oh, it is to old man Carstairs. He's rolling in dough like a baker's elbow. <laughs> well, I must say I'm relieved. I wish you'd stick to simple tricks with cards and coins. Wait till you see the one I do where I find the dollar bill in the grapefruit. Quite a production. The first thing I do is get the grapefruit. Hi, Molly. Hello, pal. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. Take a card. What? Take a card. Take a card. Any card. Oh, card tricks, eh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I picked a card, pal. Now what? What card was it? Uh, five of spades. Correct. Now watch me do a trick where I take the... <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Watch me do a trick. You got an egg? I have some in the kitchen, Mr. Wilcox. Shall I get one? Well, I might need more than one. Let's all go out in the kitchen. Something tells me I'm going to regret this, but come on. I'll get you an egg out of the refrigerator, Mr. Wilcox. What are you practicing this magic for, pal? I'm doing a magic act at the Elk Smoker tonight. Founder's Day dinner. Honor Mort Toops. You mean to tell me Mort Toops founded the Elks Club? No, but he hauled in a bushel of clams one day in 1936 and we had a clam bake. We all ate clams till we almost foundered, so we celebrate Founders Day every year. Now, here's the egg, Mr. Wilcox. Thanks. Who's got a quarter? Here. Okay. Now then, I take the egg in my left hand, mm -hmm. and with a slight movement of... Ah, oh. oh, dear, and that was my last egg, too. You're about as graceful as a moose on snowshoes, Junior. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Molly. Give me a damp cloth and I'll wipe it right up. Here, uh, may I use this cloth? Sure, go ahead. Well, I'm surprised to see you can really kneel down like that, Junior. You got such a crease in them pants, I thought they were made of aluminum tweed. <laughs> <laughs> ah, there we are. Now, let's see the trick, Junior. All right, come on back in the living room. Well, go ahead, Mr. Wilcox. Hey? Go ahead, go ahead. We're go you're going to show us some magic. I did. You did? Why, sure. Wasn't it magical the way that egg came off that Johnson glow-coated linoleum? Oh, <laughs> That's just an example of how easily spots, stains, and smudges are removed when you use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat on your linoleum. Isn't my kitchen magic as good as your parlor magic? You mean you wasted our last egg just for that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
But you'll admit I showed considerable restraint. I didn't say a word about how glow coat protects and preserves the beauty and color of linoleum, or how it makes it wear six to ten times longer, or how it shines as it dries in 20 minutes or less, and how Yeah, but what was the quarter for? What quarter, Molly? The quarter you borrowed from me. Oh, that. That had nothing to do with the trick. I have to take a bus downtown, and I had nothing smaller than a $5 bill. Mm. I'll pay you back next week, pal. Thanks a lot. So long, Molly. You know something, McGee? What? I'll bet he dropped that egg on purpose. No. <laughs> you think he did? He wouldn't do a thing like that. Now, let me see. I got What hey. on earth are those chains for? That's part of my act. I padlock myself into them and escape. Later on, I'm going to develop the act so I can be chained up, handcuffed, nailed into a packing box, and dropped into the river. What? But that's for the future. <laughs> Just now, i got to practice the basic escape. I'll get into them and out in the morning. I know one thing I'd like to see you get out of. What's that? Doing that magic act tonight. Huh? You're going to lay an egg that'll be the envy of every ostrich in Australia. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, bye, George. You just... Come in. Oh, hello, Dr. Gamble. Hello, Molly. Afternoon, prune face. <laughs> Hi, fever chart. <laughs> Coming to the elk smoker tonight? I am indeed, if conditions permit. You know, I was putting on a magic act down there tonight, didn't you? The yes, smoker. yes, Mandrake. I heard how you bulled your way onto the bill, and as an amateur magician myself, I'd like to know what tricks you're going to present. The miser's dream, guillotine, the disappearing birdcage, the levitation of Princess Mahula. Heavenly days, I never heard of any of those. Me either, Doc. Naturally, they are the classics of illusion. Mahula? Yeah. And I wouldn't expect a tent show Thurston like you to know anything more involved than pulling a bunch of paper flowers out from under your vest. Mm -hmm. uh, you're using those chains for an escape trick? Yep. Well, you better be sure whoever puts them on knows what he's doing. That's a very good thought, Doctor. Mm -hmm. I'd hate to go through the rest of my married life with a non-skid husband. <laughs> ah, Panucci, I've studied this trick and I know what I'm doing. Nobody in the world that could tie me up in these chains so I couldn't escape in two minutes. Um, would you care to risk a small wager on that dreamboat? You're doggone right, I would, wise guy. Put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> and make it easy on yourself. Two bucks. Two bits it is. No. Two bucks. <laughs> okay, two bucks. Just a minute, McGee, and you better be sure. Sure, I'm sure, all right. This guy's got more bluff than the Hudson River. <laughs> Who are you going to get to chain me, smart boy? Going to do it myself. Sit in that chair. Okay. Oh, this I love. <clears throat> now, let's see. Around. And <laughs> under the... Sh huh? <laughs> under My the shoulders. Now, I don't know how anybody could get out of those things, Doctor. <laughs> You wait, baby. I'll slip out of these like a butterfly out of a raccoon. You mean cocoon, dearie. Oh, no, I don't. A cocoon is a small lake. That's a lagoon, you illiterate little jackdaw. <laughs> I thought a lagoon was a white chicken. No, that's a leggern. Go on, leggerns are a kind of putties. <laughs> Everybody knows that. You're thinking of leggings and hold still. Well, then, what's a raccoon? It's a small animal, like a badger. Why, certainly. And when I think how I badgered Doc into betting two bucks on this thing, I... Oh, you through, Doc? <laughs> yes, I'm through. And so are you, for the afternoon. Can you get loose, dearie? <laughs> Can I get loose, she said. She said that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you watch this. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, I've got to be running along, Molly. I'll leave a few aspirin tablets for him. He'll have quite a headache in an hour or so. Hey, wait a minute, Doc. I want you to see. I want you to see me win that bet. Well, just call me up when you get free, Merlin. I'll be at my office till seven thirty. Good day, Molly. Goodbye, Doctor. Now listen, he isn't in any danger, is he? Only of losing two bucks, my dear. <laughs> Goodbye now. Anything I can do, McGee? 
No. <laughs> now we ought to these chains in no time at all. <laughs> Just give me time. Give me time. Just give me time. <laughs> Singing down the road. There's nothing like the morning feeling fresh as a dew when you're going where the stainers to behold. The cows are in the meadow and they give me the moves. I go singing down the road. My little dog is tagging right along at my heels. He's so happy that he's hopping like a toad. His little tail is wagging cause he knows how I feel as I go singing down the road. The sun is grand, my face is tan. I'm so carefree and gay. And as I hike, I feel just like a school kid for a day. And when the day is over, there's a girl I'm to meet. You see, but that's another episode. My heart and I are stacking up my dreams kind of neat as I go singing down the road. Ta -da -da. give up. I can't get out of these chains. Call Doc. I've been calling him every 15 mm -hmm. minutes for the last two hours, dearie. There's no answer. I sure talked myself into this, didn't I? Well, what was the trick? How are you supposed to get out of them? Oh, I had a little key in my mouth. All I had to do was twist around so as I could drop the key in my hand and boom, out. Well? Well, I dropped the key in my hand okay, but it don't fit the padlock. <laughs> That dreaded magic store must have sold me the wrong lock or something. Oh, God. A dog gun. Oh, dear. You know, this could be serious, oh. McGee. I'll ask Beulah if she has any little keys that might fit it. No, no, no. That's too embarrassing. Oh, Beulah. No. Beulah. Somebody ball for Beulah? <laughs> some lower money. Well, for goodness sakes, who do that to Mr. McGee? Dr. Gamble did, Beulah. Dr. Gamble did it, but... Did Dr. Gamble do this? <laughs> he steal anything? How'd you get loose, ma'am? For goodness sakes, he might have killed us all. I never figured him for a man who would do a thing. Oh. <laughs> I told him to do it, Beulah. Yes, yeah, so you told... You told him to? Yes, Beulah. You see, it was a trick. That's a dirty one, if you ask me. No, look, Bill, I'm studying magic, see, and this is part of my act. Oh, if you study magic, then I never see anybody so wrapped up in this study. Ain't them chains off of heaven? Why don't you take them off? Well, he can't get them off, Beulah. Ever? <laughs> Look, Beulah, can you find me a little key someplace around that'll fit this padlock? Try one of those keys to the padlock on his golf bag, Beulah. I hate low lamb to Mr. Toops, ma'am. Oh, my gosh. Well, find something. Do something. These dead ratted things must weigh 90 pounds. I think maybe we better... I'll get it, ma'am. McGee, Resident. <laughs> Who? Mr. McGee? 
Well, uh, Rob, I'm sorry. He's tied up right now. <laughs> yeah, sir. Who call him, please? Fourth National Bank? Yes, I'll tell him you call Mr. National. <laughs> Goodbye. Gee whiz, I got to get, get, get out of these things in time to put on my act at the Elks Club tonight. They start smoking at 8 o'clock. Well, let's see if we can't find something to pick that lock with. Keep your chain up, McGee. Come on, get <laughs> Okay, ma'am. This here is the first time in my life I regret knowing only respectable people. <laughs> Your boyfriend with a set of burglar tools come in mighty handy right now. Doggone it, I wish you two would get going. You stand there gabbing with me, sitting here bound up like ten years of the National Geographic. Bound up like ten years of the National Geographic? <laughs> I'll bet a cookie Doc Gamble done this delivered. If I ever lay my dukes on that witch doctor, I'll jam his stethoscope so far down his throat he can hear the clocks in his socks. <laughs> Double crossing underhanded. Come in. Come in and bring a hacksaw. Hi, mister. Oh, oh my gosh. Here I sit hoping for a Pinkerton Dick or a Northwest Mounted Cop or the man called X, and what do I get? You. Oh, boy, are you ever tied up. <laughs> he said I'd probably find you squirming around like a can of live bait. Who said that? Hmm? I said, who said that? Who said what? Who said I'd be squirming around like a can of live bait? <laughs> Dr. Gamble, I bet you. Uh huh. Mm hmm. He said he took your padlock and put his own on you. <laughs> that dirty low down. He did, did he? Hmm? I says, he did, did he? He did what? He substituted padlocks on me. No wonder my key wouldn't work. He gave me the right key, though, mister, you see. Here it is. Oh, thank goodness. Hand it here, sis. <laughs> come on, sis. Come on. Come on. Unlock me. No. What? No, no. Dr. Gamble said not to unlock you till 8.30. Oh, he did, did he? Well, what time is it now? Half past. Half past what? I don't know. There's only one hand on my Mickey Mouse witch watch. <laughs> But, uh, Mr. McGee, hmm? if I had, uh, 50 cents, I could get another hand on it, and then it would be half past eight, and, um, uh, <laughs> I could, uh, unlock your chains, I bet you. Oh, oh. A bribe, eh? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll do it. But I can't give you 50 cents till you unloose me. Okay. There. <laughs> Now, thanks, sis. And here's your 50 cents. Now, hand me that phone. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Give me the phone. Hello, hello, hello. Operator, give me the Elks Club on, huh? No, no, Mert. I got no time for that now. <laughs> give me the Elks. Hello, Elks Club. This is Pepper McGee speaking. I just wanted to tell you I'll be a little late, but... Huh? What? Doc Gamble has taken over the magic act. What? He's on now? Why, that snake in the grass! That lowlife! I'll come down there and tear him limp. That increase in the gasoline ration that's coming up was good news, wasn't it? Doesn't mean you can go gallivanting around the country yet, but it's a pleasant thing to have a few extra miles a week. Why not celebrate by giving your car a beauty treatment with Johnson's Car New? Then you can really enjoy that extra driving. Because it's more fun and more satisfaction to drive a car that shines and sparkles. Now, if cleaning and polishing a car were still a big chore, you might argue the point. But Car New knocks that argument into a cocked hat. 
it is easy to give your car a showroom shine with Car New. This popular polish does two jobs at once, both cleans and polishes with one application. Car New is a liquid. You apply it with just enough rubbing to loosen the dirt and grime. It dries to a white powder, and when you wipe this powder off, you'll be surprised how beautiful the finish looks. There's only one way to find out about Johnson's Car New, and that's to try it for yourself. Why not do it this week? Cat and I named her Ben Hur, cause I sold all her kittens for a dollar per. Hey, <laughs> honey, <laughs> are you home, dearie? How's the elk smoker? Oh, marvelous! And you know what? I had to finish Doc's magic act myself. Why was that? Well, he was supposed to pop up onto the stage through a trapdoor, see, but some dirty bum had moved the table over it, and he couldn't get out. <laughs> Daisy might have been smothered. <laughs> this is yeah. the National Broadcasting Company. Good night, Good night all.